All right, guys, good afternoon. Um, we have got something a bit different today. We have got an NAD, NAD, whatever you want to call them, uh, CD player. It is a 5440 model, which I believe is in the 5000 series. And this was sent in uh, one of the subscribers, got in touch, which makes me feel like a real YouTuber. And uh, it got in touch and said, look, I've got this, uh, this NAD CD player. It's not particularly working very well. Apparently the transport suffer from, from the usual issues and uh, would you like to have a look at it for your channel? So I said yes I would and I got it off him actually a while ago now and this has been kind of overtaken from other projects and whatever else. So I thought today we'll have a look at it. So it is a 5440. A quick Google has revealed that they suffer from laser and transport problems and um, I suspect that that's where we're going to go with this one. So, when I first got it, I have actually been in this already. When I first got it, it wouldn't read a disc. So, pop the top off, and it seemed that the uh, the disc that the CD sits on was kind of pressed too far down on the motor spindle. So, I opened it up, loosened it a little bit, and it does read discs. So, you know, I was high-fiving myself at that point. Uh, I've got a disc in it. As you can see, it's read the disc. High-fiving myself, you know, for an easy fix, and uh, I was moving on. Sat and played, I think this is the darkness. I got up to about track four and it wouldn't read track four. So obviously something was going on. So I chucked in another couple of CDs to try them out. Some CDs would work really well and some CDs would not read at all. So if I were to press play on this one now, um, chances are this will play. And uh, it, it has played, it has been playing. But it seemed to uh, just randomly stop here and there. So, uh, had a bit of a Google for a service manual. No real service manual. There is a service manual for the 5000 series, which is pretty close. There was a service bulletin about dry solder on uh, some capacitors. Something to do with the laser. So, I'll have a look at the capacitors and let's see if there's any dry solder in it and things like that. But generally, I think we're probably going to go for a laser swap. That just seems to be the thing that is done with this. Uh, so I have preempted you know, the finest Chinese laser to go on it. And it is a KSS210A. And uh, yeah, we're going to go through the process of a laser swap. You can adjust the voltage on the laser. There's a small pot on the back. And you can also clean the transport. Uh, rails that the transport sits on so uh, sorry not the transport rails the laser rails and give them a good clean out and all that but it looks really clean it looks totally fine so i think for the price that the laser was which was about seven quid i'm just going to swap the laser out and clean the laser transport and everything else so i got a little bit of a video on what the laser was doing it does emit a red light when you when you press play And it, it just didn't seem to be lasering properly, you know, it was very clicky, it was kind of flapping about a little bit in its housing. So that's what we're going to do, so I'm going to get this off, we're going to get the transport out, and we're just going to swap this laser over. First thing you do then is eject the transport, and this little cover just pops off the front, because this transport's used in many different applications. And then we need to, uh, we'll close that again, turn it off so we're not getting electrocuted, and take the cover off. So a quick look inside then, while well, I get a uh, a poking stick, it's kind of quite, quite an expensive poking stick, it's a Horatech hand putter on her for watchmaking. So uh, this is our transport as you can see over here. It looks clean, it looks fine. Um, Board on the right then, our usual supplier caps and capacitors, which we'll, I'll, I'll give a visual to, but all the caps look totally fine. We'll have a look underneath uh, this board, see if we've got any dry solder joints and whatnot. All right, so this is what I was talking about, the service bulletin thing. Um, this I found randomly uh, through Google, just searching for a service manual. I did find one for the 5000, which covers the 5440 as well, so pretty good. It was just a little bit, similar to the problems that I was facing. So uh, this says service hint. I'm not sure whether this is an AD issued one, but this stops playing. Play one accept a CD. Fault can be intermitted. 
intermittent, I imagine. So uh, what this says is bad solder joint, the focus transistors, and there's the cords, and the solution is resolder the joints. You can also replace them. Advantages of replacement transistors, better cooling. Please do not mark them directly to the PCB. Keep some distance. So it's not really a good sign, is it, when the company is releasing the service bulletin like this? Um, I'm presuming it's come from MAD, uh, NAD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these solder joints and see what they look like and see if it provides any kind of benefit. Quite difficult to see, but I think you can see the... Uh... The dry solder joints there on the transistors that the service bullet I mentioned. There's a little bit of warmth and you can see where it's got a bit warm as well. So we're going to button them up and uh, see if it solves our problem. The amount of solder used on this is absolutely terrible. In truth, I'm not actually convinced that this is the issue. I think the laser is the issue. But we've seen that service bulletin. And uh, that's what made me lock, basically. And uh, it seems very silly to not deal with it. All right, I think that'll have a little inspection, but I think that'll do. I think I have to turn the solder line down. It's a little bit, a little bit too hot, I think, for the job. But we'll see how that fares. We've got a uh, standard power supply, two forty in, and one of these big long pushy buttons on the side over here uh, that extends from the front casing. Uh, I like any of these stuff, honestly. Uh, my first amp was a. Uh, 3230 or whatever it is, the, the, the standard NAD amp that everybody has. I think I was about 14, 15 when I bought it off eBay when eBay first opened. So I've got a bit of a soft spot for them. It's a British brand, uh, I believe, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, I've not really had a massive issue with them. Some people like them, some people don't. But let's get this transport out and see where we get. Our usual raft of screws here and there so first of all i'm going to take out where this uh this earth cable is attached to the top of the uh the transport and this metal plate is actually more like a retaining plate to be honest with you and that one's loose i've got a bit of fluff on the screwdriver uh and basically it's these two um screws on the top and then there is also a couple of screws holding the transport down to the uh, to the chassis. And then realistically, once you've unplugged uh, the cables from the main board there, you are home and dry. Um, and then once it's on the bench, we can start looking at dismantling uh, and swapping this, this bad boy out. So there's a couple of screws down the sides of the transport. They're quite tight because they're in metal. No. That screwdriver is not going to cut it. There's one. It's going to be tweezer time to get these out from uh, underneath without wrecking them. I think not losing them somewhere. Sometimes these transports they uh, they like to be screwed in kind of underneath that long bar that connects to your power supply. Which can just be an absolute pain in the uh, posterior, shall we say. 
Okay, so is that loose? Uh, there's one at the back. Okay, and the plugs from the transport are this one at the back, this longer one, uh, this small one, and one more at the front. So, because we took the faceplate off the front, this should now just lift clear. So the laser has supplied uh, without touching anything. It looks identical. We've got these two plugs. Um, we've got the uh, the transport guides there for moving the laser up and down on the uh, on the drawer, and our pot for adjusting the voltage. Nobody can seem to remember whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise for adjust the voltage. So I'm just going to totally leave that. There was rumours that they're in the five thousand service manual. You could put an oscilloscope on, see what it's doing. But there is no real indication of where to put your oscilloscope. So I'm going to look at taking the old one off first. So the absolute first thing we need to do before we uh, do anything with this is there is a jumper that is soldered up from the manufacturer. And it is to prevent static and stuff like that whilst it's in transit. So on this particular laser, it is this... Sorry for the shaky camera, but... It is this uh, particular joint here, and if you look on your, your old laser, you'll see that this joint doesn't exist, it's been wiped off. So what we're going to do is we're going to desolder this joint here, and um, I mean, it's a difficult one because in reality, this should be desoldered once you've got it in position. So uh, unfortunately... I think that it's going to be a bit of a nightmare left, right and centre. So I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to desolder that. Just touch it with a soldering iron and just break that link. And then we can go ahead and install it. If we look at that close up now, that's uh, terrible quality camera footage. Those two links have now been separated, so the laser should work fine. So I'm going to uh, just manually move this a bit further down. And then we're going to look at, so I'm going to get my uh, fingernails in either side and remove these two plugs from the laser connector which is easier said than done by the look of it. There's a red one and there's a white one. And then just move these out of the way. And now we can access the laser itself, hopefully. It's on this rail here, so I'm presuming we need to um, remove this bit off the top in order to free it from the rail and just looking at where the screws are right got you so i think the first thing i want to do is in order to access the uh, the screws and what they're holding this on i need the draw to be ejected uh could have done this obviously um in uh, in situ but i forgot so there's a large cog down here which is driven by your eject mechanism motor and i'm going to turn it very slowly just Gently by hand because we're looking at plastic here and just see if we can. In fact, there should be a space where around about there it should allow us to slide it open. So, the uh, I turned that manually there, and there's this kind of a space around the cog in between uh, lifting this transport unit up and the eject mechanism closing fully, which gives us access to what we can see there. I think I'm going to remove this top cog here, which has got like a, uh, a one of the plastic kind of U-clips holding it in place. So I've just got a, a nice flat screwdriver in there without trying to damage anything. And I'm just going to remove that again without damaging it. Keep that for Ron later on if I can just get it to not stick to my hand and then I'm going to remove this top cog that one's off all right now it seems to me this this laser here is uh, basically held in place by uh, 
the rail. So the rail is held in place by these screws holding the, the black plastic surround to the metal transport. So I'm going to pull these off, see if we can get it loose. It seems that actually I've loosened this bottom screw uh, down this end here. I think it's just this top one. I think this plastic bit, if I can just move my hand, I think this plastic bit is purposely designed in order to just pop that bit out of the way. So now this top screw is off, I can kind of wiggle that bit out of the way and it should allow me to, there we go. So now, if I can slide the rail out, and there's our laser. Beautiful. And there's our rail. Okay. So there's a lot of differences between the two lasers physically, side by side. This one's the cheap one from China. This one's the original. So, I mean, we can only try, yeah. So let's fire this one on and see where we get. Zoom out a little bit. I might even increase the resolution. So I'm going to put that in there. I've put a little bit of grease on this rail as well. Honestly, I think I might need a little bit more. I'm just going to put a bit of grease in there. Always trying to remember not to uh, to touch this laser as I'm doing this. So a little bit of grease in there. And the same on the other side. Some white lithium grease. Keep that toothpick for later. And thread this. That's a lot smoother. Okay. And I believe now if I can get this to sit on this rail here, which I'm also going to grease with the same. Let's give this a little bit of a, just a, just enough. There we go. Right, so now it should just be a case of positioning this where it needs to go. So let's just, just seat that there and seat that uh, into its little housing there. And then we just need to lift this plastic thing up over the top. Like that. Alright, so I screw it down, refit these two cogs. I did actually remove that one there just simply out of easiness. And then one really just fire it up and see what happens. Again a little bit of uh, a little bit of lithium and a bit on the teeth, I think. Not too much. If we can. Okay. And that is. Cooking my gas. So now I'll stick that clip back on the, uh, the top of that. And do it without losing it. Come on. And there's one half of it on. Okay. There we go. In. And then our two plugs. Right, which one's going to go in first? I think the white one. And then the red one. Slightly different colour red, but you know, such is life as long as it works. I really aren't that bothered. Okay, plugs in, screws are in, let's stick it back in the chassis and see what it does. So in the age old uh, description of installation is reverse of disassembling, it should just be a case really of, uh, we'll set our transport in place. We'll move you around a little bit. Transport in. 
and then onto our plugs which are all different sizes anyway so pretty straightforward without bending any pins and that's the third one and the last one down there and then put our screws in the cover goes over the top which is that way around uh, and then screws so I'm getting all tweezers out again because this is these are in a really deep kind of groove down here these in right that's us in so let's give it a test there's obviously always a chance that this uh this laser is going to be rubbish from the start but this is a quick inspection of our old laser it it really doesn't have any signs of any faults or anything on it it looks original so i mean i'll keep that to one side and give this a test Right then, so, power's on, we're all screwed back together, read the DAC very quickly actually, and we'll play track one. And what's interesting about CD players is because it's a constant feed of information, where it starts with track one on the outside, and then when you go to the end of the CD, the disc will actually slow down because of the rate of uh, the rate of spin needs to slow down to get the last track. So if we go halfway into the disc, you notice we're at half speed, and that's still reading. And if we go to the end, we're real slow there, and that is picking that up and playing it quite nicely. If we just demonstrate it from this end, if you can see it, there's a red filter on the uh, display on this, which isn't exactly. Uh, good for there we go i still don't trust this to be honest with you and it needs a good playthrough picks up dc really quick track one let's skip some tracks real quick and see what happens uh yeah i think we're good All right, pretty straightforward fix there, I think. Uh, all for the price of, I think it was £6.52 delivered. So what I'm going to do is going to plug this in, play some CDs, make sure we're good. And then I think we are 100% ready to go. So a couple of days on now, and uh, I've played maybe 12 to 15 CDs through this, and it's been absolutely fine. Um, there's some cheesiness gone through it, and there's some 80s good stuff. Uh, we've had some Daft Punk, Peter Frampton, a bit of Garth Brooks, and it's been fine, absolutely fine. And the build quality is really good. Uh, the sound quality is good as well. I uh, really don't have any issue with how it's been, how it's been playing, and uh, how it looks either. And it's quite pleasant on the eye as well. So pretty straightforward fix there. Uh, laser was straight in, and it was plug and play. I understand them lasers are used in things like Sega Master, uh, Sega Mega Drive CDs, all sorts of bits and bobs. So if you're looking for a quick and easy fix, not messing about with electrical adjustments, I'll be honest with you, I looked in the service manual at the electrical adjustments for this, and they are beyond my uh, ability at the moment with an oscilloscope. So there we go. Hopefully that's been informative if you've got one of these, and if not, it was a bit of fun to watch. All right, thanks.